Hey, good evening, everyone. We are so excited that you're joining us tonight. Of course, I'm one of your hosts, I'm James Howard. And I'm Regina Howard, and we're so excited for you to be here tonight. And, of course, we know that October yeah. holds weight to um, a few issues that we face in our society, um, domestic violence awareness and breast cancer awareness month and we will be touching on breast cancer tonight yeah and so if you have a family member or a friend or someone you know that has been dealing with this then we want you to have them to tune in because we want to inspire and encourage them tonight i have on my pink for breast cancer awareness to support because it means so much for the people who are dealing uh, with this disease. But you know, as always, we always say it's not about us here. Of course, it's about God. It's about motivating, encouraging, and uplifting you, our viewers. And I, I mean, tonight with uh, our first music guest, uh, every one of them are either dealing with or have beaten breast cancer. Yes. And so right now we're going to take you to the music ministry of the Pink Nation Survivors Choir. Just want to praise you.
just want to praise you. Amen. Amen. And uh, <laughs> we have so much to praise God for. Even when we don't think that we do, yeah. we actually have a lot to praise him for. And sometimes we just have to stop and pause and, and, and give reverence to that. And somebody is here to do that right now with uh, a powerful testimony. Yeah. Let me just tell you, because God has been good to her. If you, if you watch Atlanta Homicide, you've seen her on there. Mm -hmm. um, she's hosted in Joy in Our Town and uh, radio, the news, C CBS Atlanta News. And just, I mean, I could go on and tell you but one of the things about her is she's real, mm. yeah. she's genuine, and she has a heart to help others, regardless of what she's been through. And we're happy to have her here tonight to share her story with you, as she is not only a survivor, but she is a warrior. Yes, I P am. Please welcome <laughs> Jaquetta Williams. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. We're it's happy to honored. have you. We're yeah. happy to have you. Um, you are a staple yeah. in the city of Atlanta. I have to remember that sometimes when yeah. people say that when they're talking, I'm like, hey, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, it's me. Okay. I'll take it's, that. It's Thank you very much. staple in the city of Atlanta, covering news, yeah. sharing what's happened in our city and across the nation mm -hmm. as it comes to the city. But then you had to stop yeah. at some point yeah. and share your news yeah. with that very, with this very same city. Right. Well, you know, here's the thing. I think in television news, because I worked at WSB right. and then I worked for a CBS affiliate. And at the time when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was at WSB and I was in my thirties. I ate right. I exercised. You know, I did all of the things that when, if you check the box, I checked them correctly. And you're always told as a journalist that you were never the story, that you tell stories, but you're not the story. But it's amazing how God made it to where the most effective story that I've been able to tell was the one that happened to me. And you know, I realized that sometimes God gives us a gift and it is not packaged in the way that you want to receive it, mm -hmm. but it is a gift just the same. So I realized with working at WSB for as long as I had been, and then um, finding something in my breast when I just took a shower. Thankfully, I use um, exfoliating gloves to wash my body. And one day I just happened to feel something and it didn't alarm me at all because I'm young. So it, it, my mind didn't automatically go to cancer. I just thought, you know, I'm just gonna get it checked out. You know, just graduated up to a couple of months and then I heard you have infiltrating ductal carcinoma. And at the time I heard that, I was at WSB, I had written my package, which is called a story. And um, I kept asking the doctor, well, what does that mean? And he was like, you have cancer. And I said, okay, hung up the phone, kept writing my story. And then I called my managing editor. And when I said the words is when I saw all of this water on my keyboard and didn't realize because in news, we just kind of move. You don't necessarily take in all of the feelings that you um, receive from people because it, it, it would overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. So I just kept working. And it wasn't until I told my managing editor and I said the words out loud that I have cancer that I just, I lost it. Mm. I lost it. I thought I was going to die. But honey, 12 years later, <laughs> I'm right. like Hezekiah. God was like, we're gonna give you some more time. Yeah. He was like, you're like Joshua, you are a soldier, you yes. are in my army. And I realized that I got all of that because I'm on a platform where I am on television every day mm -hmm. telling stories. There are young women who look up to me for whatever reason. And because of that, they decided to check their breasts and either they went on Jaquetta's journey with me mm -hmm. and dealt with their cancer, mm -hmm. or they said, okay, this was absolutely nothing. But I thank you for being a conduit for being just observant about my body and about my health. And the one thing I will also say too is that, you know, men think that, oh, well, you yeah. know, that's a woman's disease, mm -hmm. but it is not no. a woman's disease. I interviewed a man who, um, kept telling his sisters to get their breasts checked and come to find out he had breast cancer. Wow. And he is a 19 year breast cancer survivor. Yeah, so if good. you have a chest, if you have breasts, then you need to be diligent about checking your body yes. and knowing what feels off 
and what is just, you know, normal to you. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that I think I want to make mention too. When it comes to black and brown people, mm -hmm. we may not be diagnosed as much as our Caucasian counterparts, but we die more often mm -hmm. because we don't want to know or we feel mm -hmm. like we're just going to pray it away. And don't get me wrong, there is absolutely nothing wrong with prayer. Thankfully, I had a doctor who was, you know, had a medical side, but she also had a strong faith just like I did. And when you put those two things together, mm -hmm. you are unstoppable. Uh -huh. And I think that because we don't want to know, if I, the kind of cancer that I had, had I waited, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be sitting here. Well, mm -hmm. I can tell you that for sure. I would not be sitting here. Mm -hmm. But because I went in and we got, we took that thing out and we, I did chemo, I did radiation and I did a lot of praying. Because the one thing I realized in telling my story on camera, it was I felt strong in doing so, but I also realized I wanted be, to be strong for the people who were watching me. Mm -hmm. So I never allowed myself to have a fallout moment in front of people or mm -hmm. on camera. And it wasn't until my third chemo treatment when I realized, like, Lord, I'm tired. Like, I, 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 you know, I, I was bald head. I was, I was overweight. I was just fighting for my life. And I felt like, you know what? I I've done everything I needed to do. I don't have children. Like, I, I, I would like for you to go ahead on and bring me into the pearly gates of glory. <laughs> I am ready. Yeah. I got into my bathroom. I laid out. I'm very dramatic. I <laughs> laid out. And I was like, just go ahead and take me, Jesus. Just take me. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited. Mm -hmm. And then I felt myself getting angry about it. So then I had to call myself and I just said, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I f you know. I kept singing, and so then I got right. up, put a face full of makeup on, put my wig on, pranced around, and realized there was something else for me to do. Yeah. So I was like, obviously, this is not my time, and this is not when I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. So I'm dusted it off, and I wanted to show people you can survive, you can warrior and you can live and not die. Mm. Amen. Amen. I'm just talking. I just <laughs> let oh, but this, this is your story. <laughs> right. Thank you. This is your story. story. <laughs> and you, you know, you've got to tell your story how it comes. Yeah. Because somebody is listening. I'm, I'm, I, I may not have that testimony. So to someone else, what can I tell them? Because right. I've not been there. Right. I may know people that have been there. Yeah. But for you, you, you are a warrior. I am. Girl, listen. <laughs> I am. Because here's the if thing. If I see one more warrior <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> pose and talk about I'm a warrior, because they wore it with the quiet. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Y'all take it over. I felt like I am a survivor, but more than a survivor, because when it, when it comes to war, we are either coming out of a battle okay. or pressing towards one. Mm -hmm. And that is cyclical. Mm -hmm. You're never going to stop being in some kind of battle. And there have been times when I felt like, Lord, I can't take it. I can't do it. I want to give up. So I was like, rather than just be a survivor, I went to war. Mm -hmm. So on the times that I don't feel as strong as I know that I can be, I look down at my chest mm -hmm. and I know, Jaquetta, you are a warrior. Mm -hmm. And this one is the Breast Cancer Awareness Edition. Mm -hmm. She's got a crown. She's got two crowns because that, you know, yes. represents the girls. Yeah. And the exclamation <laughs> point is the sword yes. that we carry. Mm -hmm. And I never want to forget that I am a warrior and mm -hmm. I fought a battle and I won. Mm -hmm. And even if I lose a battle, it doesn't necessarily mean I've lost. It just means I've learned mm -hmm. and I'm not going to do whatever I did wrong again. Right. And just press until God calls me home and it's not that time. And here's the thing that I will say about cancer, too. It taught me how to live on purpose. The things that I would be concerned about before, and I would say this to anybody, I'm not concerned because you don't have the time that you think that you have. Mm -hmm. So while I'm wasting time, I, I can't do that anymore. I have to be intentional. I have to be purposeful about my life and what I'm doing here because I'm like, God, don't let me leave this earth and not do what you brought me here for. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what it is. Mm -hmm. And that way, when it's time for me to go, I'm okay with going because mm -hmm. the bottom line about cancer we can't stay here for forever. Mm -hmm. We're not going to live here for forever. Mm -hmm. You don't get to decide when you're going to leave, but until you do, mm -hmm. you better be real purposeful about your life. You yeah. ain't got time to waste. Yeah. You really, really don't. Yeah. When did that change for you? 
that the, the being purposeful about mm -hmm. my life. Um, once I, I think I hit the, when I hit the five year mark, surviving cancer, because I'm not, I, I will admit every time I would go get my checkups, it would be like the first time. I would fall out like I did the first time, but it would be the fourth time, the second time, <laughs> the fifth time. And one day I just decided that I cannot keep living like this because I'm stunting mm -hmm. my You're life mm -hmm. by worrying constantly because at the time I was diagnosed, I didn't know anything was wrong. And something about that mentally did something to me to feel like you're, you're healthy, you're moving, you're exercising, but there was something going on that was killing me. So instead of living that, I just decided every day that I get up, this is going to be a good day and I'm going to decide. I chart my day and I speak intentions for my life. And the funny thing about God is I love that he hears you. Yes, he does. Out of all the people in the world that he's created to know that you've spoken something mm -hmm. and he will respond in kind to let you know I've heard you mm -hmm. and I'm answering you. Mm -hmm. That gives me such joy. Yes, so I speak everything that I, if I wanna have a good day, I'm, I'm, Lord, I'm gonna have a good day. If I'm gonna encounter somebody amazing, Lord, I know you're gonna make me encounter somebody amazing because what you speak is so powerful. Yes, it is. And I will say this too, I remember years ago, my best friend and I were talking and I was like, you know, I can handle anything. I just don't want to get cancer. Mm. I just don't want to get cancer. I can do anything. Just don't let me get cancer. Mm. God like heard I, you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He heard me. But and he you wanted you to, to and, know. And then you also have to think about God saying, why not you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because he knew, one, that you would fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, that you'd have purpose. Mm -hmm. And more than anything else, by you showing your journey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he knew the exposure that he would end up getting all the glory anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I realize, here's the thing too, God trusts each one of us with assignments. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that he trusted me with this particular assignment, but he knew I was equipped for it. And I was you like- You didn't, I but didn't, he did. But he did. <laughs> he did. He did. Listen, this, this is not about my story, but I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, and he had to show me one day, mm -hmm. This is your story mm -hmm. right now. I'm going to need you to walk this story out. <laughs> as difficult as walking mm -hmm. may be, I need you to walk the story out. And it's hard when people say, use me, Lord. Oh, you my. better be you careful. Be careful. Be very, 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 <laughs> very careful listen. in how you cho choose to be used. <laughs> what? And, <laughs> and if you want that, because I still want to be used by God, but mm -hmm. then now I say, God, give me the tools and the equipment to handle whatever, whatever you're you about to put on me, for me in order to use, use me. me. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to really have to be, you know, some people say specific and some people say Pacific. <laughs> but you have to be that when you talk yes. Pacific. When you talk to yes. God because him using you could entail him literally using you mm -hmm. and making you the example mm -hmm. of how he can keep you going. Amen. Warrior. How can they find out? More about Warrior. about ja Jaquetta. Follow Jaquetta's journey. That fit. I'm telling you, those <laughs> fitness videos. You you make us all want to get up and go. And you know, I do those fitness videos because there was a time I couldn't walk from here to at the end of your chair. Wow. It wow. would give me pain. I couldn't walk up steps. It would take me 30 minutes because I hurt so badly. So I am joyous every time. So that's why I when I when you see me working out, I give it my all because I knew there was a time that I couldn't. Right. So when it comes to Warrior, if you want to just follow me on social media, Jaquetta Williams, uh, Instagram is Jaquetta W, and um, you'll see me doing some of those workouts, and you'll see me talking about my breast cancer journey, too. Yes. And for anybody who has questions or whatever, I'm always right there. Amen. Yeah. So Inspiration. With a couple of minutes we have left, we have about maybe a minute left. Okay. I want you to look in that camera and encourage somebody who's going through something right now. Okay. Who's going through, it may not be breast cancer, but they're going some, through something right now. Okay. Just give them a word of encouragement. Okay. This is what I want to tell you if you're going through something in your life right now. I know that it doesn't feel like you can handle it. I know that it feels like it's breaking you down. But one thing I know about the way God uses his people he will break you down to the barest denominator to show you it is not your cousin, it's not your husband, it's not your friends, it's not all of the people that you think that would be around you that can get you through this. He is the only one who can get you through it. And he wants your attention. He wants you to talk to him. He wants to be best friends with you. And when I tell you I am an 
example of him breaking me down because you heard me say, I wanted to leave this earth, but God was like, no ma'am, not yet. You will live and you will not die. Yes. And since that time, yes. from the time I was bald headed and sick and you are seeing the manifestation of what God can do, it was nothing but God. And the kind of cancer I had, it was a it, it, slim chance of me making it. And here I am 12 years later, cancer Amen. free. Amen. So don't you tell me what God cannot do. Yes, it may be dark right now. Yes, it may be harmful or hurtful right now. But all I can do is tell you is to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing forward. Each day you have a plan about something that you're going to do. Even if it's just, I'm going to wake up and get out of this bed mm -hmm. and brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. And the next day, brush my teeth, comb my hair. And each day, keep moving forward because I promise you through the storm, there will be sunshine. Storms cannot last for forever. There has to be some sunshine and it's coming. Just stay strong. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for sharing your story and joining us. Yes. We love you so much. I love y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget you can follow her on all social media, Jaquetta W on Instagram, Jaquetta Williams, and to find out more about her inspiring story. Yes. Right now we're going to take you back to the music ministry, to the Pink Nation's Survivors Choir, when, we all, when all the survivors get together.
Wow. What Amazing. a time. They are having a good time. Yeah. Like is, in my radio, and you say in my radio voice, <laughs> under the direction of Vincent Ross, it's yeah. the Pink Nation Survivor <laughs> Choir. <laughs> and they're having an amazing time. Yeah. And we appreciate them for coming out and sharing their gift Amen. with us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's great. Our next guest is here to talk about her brand new motivational nuggets. And uh, she hails currently from Lithia, uh, Lithonia, Georgia. And I guess her new book is talking more on uh, a journal. It's a 52-week journal uh, to motivate women to collaborate, connect, and create mm -hmm. successful journeys. Here to talk more about that and what's going on in her life is Dr. Kim McNair. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Welcome. McNair, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad, glad that I you got did. a little correction. McDonough. I'm coming from McDonough. McDonough. <laughs> okay. I just said that. All right, all right, McDonough. I don't want That's them to be mad at me. I got to go home. You know? Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they want you to lay claim to where you are from. Yeah, yes, yes. That's yes, yes. And it's all good because yes. we're all right here together. Amen. And so um, you're coming and you're sharing motivation. Nuggets. Yes, this journey started so 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 long ago. Mm -hmm. I, I was working in ministry, mm. um, actually Divine Faith Ministries Bishop Battle. Yes. Bishop Battle. Yes. Worked with yes. them for about four years, and I was the one who had to do the uh, the announcements on Sunday. You know how that go, right? You got to get up and do the announcements. And it just came upon me to say, you know what? I want to give everybody something that they can have and take with them for the week. And I started giving and doing just doing little inspirational nuggets every, and they'd be like, "Oh, what's the nugget today? Did I miss the nugget?" And I'd be in the store, "Girl, what's the nugget this week?" Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm like y'all crazy, right? <laughs> really? But it just God just gave it to me. But you don't. When God gives us stuff, He gives it to us for a purpose. Yes. And it's going to impact. But you think it's something really small, and you're like, "I don't know what this is going to do for anybody." Uh huh. And then you find out that it does, mm -hmm. that it impacts. But has it ever impacted you? Yes, it has. I mean, it, it got to the point where I had, my mother's been teaching Sunday school for over 30 years. Wow. And I, I was like, okay, mom, I'm working on this now. And I had to call her up. But it, was, it, it just started to move me. And I said, well, wow, if it's really impacting mm -hmm. women, and just the congregation, men and women, I want to continue that journey. I want to be able to really touch people and, and just help them and empower women. Because that's, that's my, my whole platform is empowering women and inspiring mm -hmm. them to live their best life. Mm -hmm. You know, despite of what they're going through, even if it's in business or at home uh, or whatever their journey is, mm -hmm. you know, we all need that push, that, that inspiration to kind of keep us going. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to, you know, it's okay to cry. Yeah. It's yeah. okay to cry because some people, oh, you know, it's okay. Right. You can, you know, but, but we're here to lift you up. Right. And I hope that my nuggets can do that. You know, that's good. It's good that you say that because people feel like, especially when they're in ministry, uh -huh. that they have to put on this strong face. Oh, yes. And that they can't ever cry. Listen, you better cry. I know, that's right. Because if you don't get that out, mm -hmm. then what is it doing to you internally? Oh, it's killing you. It's just tearing you up. It's mm -hmm. tearing you down. And, and you know, we know what the enemy comes to do. Kills. So if it mm -hmm. kills, still, if he can fi true. figure and find a way to do that, then he, he's like, oh, I'm winning. No, you're not winning. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the devil is a liar. Right. Okay? So right. we, you know, I, I, just, I just found it to be a, uh, my ministry to really be able to help those because um, we don't know everyone's coming into church with different different things different yeah. things going on within their family base what's on their mind and if I could just get up here and just say something that it just kind of sparks something great in them oh it's all good yes it's all good yes and even just to get them to smile yes it makes a difference especially because people don't smile they think about what's going on and they don't smile mm-hmm they wow. don't isn't that yeah. something yeah it is. It's tough. It is. It's tough. <laughs> so I've kind of rolled this over so that it can help not only though everybody, all women. And I, I, my platform is for women. I, I, my thing is women on the move. Everybody's like, Kim, that's you, that woman on the move. Because I'm, I'm here, I'm there. I'm where I need to be. I ain't going to say everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you, um, but you're here and there. Yeah, here and there. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And, uh, you know, it's important um, <laughs> that even as an entrepreneur, people are starting their businesses. We have so many people that are doing right. uh, doing business, and it's really hard, and you have those tough moments. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can just look at something that can say, okay, come on, you got that ram, right? You know that ram in the bush, you got to be ready. You know, you got to be available to move. So you right. have to make sure everything is on point. It's important mm -hmm. uh, that you do that and to know your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, once you know your purpose mm -hmm. of what you're doing, then you can do anything. And mm -hmm. you just have to trust and believe God is with you. He, ha he got you. He's got your back. Yes. But he needs you to move. Yes. You know, faith without works is dead. Yes. So he needs you to move. Mm -hmm. So come on, trust and believe he got you. Give mm -hmm. him, let him take the wheel. You know, we always say that. Right? Let mm -hmm. Jesus take, take the wheel. wheel. Let, let him take it for real. Uh -huh. For real, for real. And for stop real, trying to hold real. on to it in the corner down, <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. down at he seven will or eight. He you on the right path. <laughs> you might have a few detours. But he's going to keep you on, on track. Yes, he will. Yes, he, he will. So this book helps those that are um, women that are in business. Um, you know, if, even if they're a homemaker, you know, they got to get the kids up, get them off to school, they're home doing things. And sometimes they just need something that, I'm just, this another load of clothes. I got yes. to do this. Oh, my God, it's carpool time. You know, they got to get mm -hmm. in the carpool line, right? But they may need that extra push. You know what? It was crazy today, but to God be the glory, I can keep it moving. Mm-hmm. I'm Amen. glad that you said that for women who are homemakers. Yes. That's a real job. Oh, that, what? <laughs> and and it, mm -hmm. how, how, it's it's funny because people will not think of a woman as a house uh, or a homemaker, a real job, right? It's, it's, mm, it's a job. Talk it to is. us a little bit about women on the move but are mm -hmm. struggling. You know how sometimes you start moving in the beginning, it's real good, it's real good, but you hit that point to where Nothing's happening. Nothing's moving. Nothing's moving, right? What would you say? It's time for you to just be still. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, close that door, get into your secret place, mm -hmm. all right, and, and, and pray. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you really got to put on your spiritual armor. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to get on your knees and just and, and be still and listen. Because he's talking to you. It's just so much going on. You just don't hear it. Mm -hmm. But if you, and that's really what helped me when it came time for me to write this book. Mm -hmm. We were uh, on Matthew 6 and 6. We were, we were talking about going into your secret place shutting the door, praying and, and listening. And that, that helped me a lot because, again, as, a, as an entrepreneur, when I'm doing the different things and I'm working with my clients or I'm working on a project of my own, uh, you know, it can get frustrating. It can get really hard, that, I mean, because everything's coming at you and you just have to just stop. So I find it so very important now for me to take time every day, every morning to just sit and be still and listen. Let's, let's get our plan together because it, it is hard. And for the women that are out there that are, are trying to do it, it's like, dang, every, everywhere I go, it's a barrier, boom, a door is shutting. This is, this, it's coming. Every, every no is a yes. Don't worry, it's coming. But he wants to see you. You gotta have faith and perseverance. You gotta just keep, keep going, keep striving. You're gonna get there. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah, it, it can be frustrating and I like the fact that Again, you mentioned the homemaker because you women could be at home and helping the house to function uh -huh. and still feel like they're not of value to anyone mm -hmm. um, because they're not out there doing something. Uh -huh. And so for them, for you to speak to that and to know that, listen, what you're giving your family Oh, and the yes. opportunity you have to be with your children. Oh, yes. And to be able to cook and your husband comes home and it's there. If and there's even, a husband. Right, uh, uh, right. Uh, hello. Well, that's true. <laughs> hello. Yeah, yeah. If that's there's true. a husband. Right. You know, I mean, and, and, and my grandmother was a home. I mean, my grandmother raised me and she was a home. I mean, she made sure, but she taught me how to be a you know, a young lady to have style and grace. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I saw her prepare meals for my grandfather. I, I told someone recently, I said, I don't think I've ever seen my grandfather cook. Do he know how to cook? Mm. <laughs> he going wow. on now, but my grandmother <laughs> made, when he came and his food, you know, granddaddy's coming home, you know, we, she made sure and I watched her. And I learned a lot from her on how to how to be a woman. How you know they talk about oh being submissive. It's just it's just this is your partner. This is your your helpmate. This is what you do. Don't look at us. Oh hey hey we go again. You know that kind of thing. I don't. I know that there was probably controversy and different things, but it wasn't something that was displayed all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that it was family time. It was time to sit down and eat. It was time for that. You know. 
um, when I was going through different things in school. I'm a brown girl, as you can say, I'm a, I am a brown girl. <laughs> and I had to deal with bullying, you know, oh, tar baby, you, you know, all of that wow. stuff. And my grandma said, no, you are beautiful. Look, I, I would look in the mirror, K-I-M, that spells Kim. And mm -hmm. I would, you know, and because I, I had to build that confidence. So when once I found out yeah. uh, the power and my purpose and what was in me, I, I started finding it out as a little girl. Mm -hmm. My first power, or my first superpower was confidence. Mm -hmm. Learning the confidence to be able to withstand, you know, withstand all of that mm -hmm. that was happening to me every time I had to go to school or go to the playground. Mm -hmm. And then God opened the door. He said, oh, she got confidence. I started modeling a very, I started modeling at the age of 14. And wow. you know I, that that confidence allowed me to be able to get on stage in front of people and walk and wear their clothes and do the things that I did. So I had that 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 first bit of confidence. But then going from there, you know that other superpower was believing in me, believing mm -hmm. that I could achieve, that I can do these things. Mm -hmm. So you know I tell women when I speak to women, you you have to know your purpose. But what is your power? Because you have the power. The question is, are you plugged are you in plugged to receive your, your blessing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, you know, those are things that I talk to them about when I'm talking about empowering them to what they need to do and where they need to go mm -hmm. in life. So um, there's a whole lot more with that, but you know, I, I'll be talking all night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's okay because it's motivational nuggets for women yes, on the move. Yes. You know, and, and we need this. Um, and you let me know if, if you feel the same because I think I saw something about teens. Um, oh yes, oh yes, so the young we, ladies. Yeah, we need to begin to encourage them uh -huh. to believe that they've got what it takes. Yeah. Oh yes. And that they don't have to fully conform to what's going on around right. them. They're already wonderful right where they are. Right, right. They are, they are, and you know, um, that's that, that's another passion of mine, the youth um, and the young ladies. I, always, I talk about because I was a I was a young teen, I was a young lady, so I know some of the yeah. things that they're going through, right, and some yeah. of the challenges they have. So who else better to be able to relate to them and talk to them about that? And somebody that's is some, been someone it. that has, has been through it. I don't and, think they think we have. Them. Oh, the, what? I don't think they think no, we've they experienced. No, because they say, oh, you, you, you know, you, you still on Facebook, so you know, you are, no, uh, uh, come on now, don't, don't do that to me, don't do that to me. But I'm on Instagram too. Don't worry, I right, just don't right. chat chat or whatever right, they call right, it. Right, right, Snapchat. Amen. Right. Amen. But they need to, they need good role models. And so like do. I talk about my grandmother, she was a great role model. Mm -hmm. um, and so the young girls, they just need to see good role models. It's, it, everybody don't have a big mom and a nana like we had, you know, back right. in the day. Right. It's a little different. So now that I'm a grandmother, I'm nana. I didn't take over. I'm the matriarch now. I'm nana, although they little. But I'm mm -hmm. playing nana now to be able to show them and to, you know, help them along the way. Pick up Absolutely. the phone, call me, uh, FaceTime me, whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you, but for the young girls, they just need to know that they are, they, um, they have a worth. Yes. Um, that they can become anything that they want to. Yes. If you work hard, you can have anything you want. That's what my nana said. You work hard and you can have it. If you, and again, if you believe in within yourself, you gotta believe. You gotta you trust gotta and believe. believe. That's and right. And you gotta know that as long once once you once you know that you can do so many other things. Yes. Um, and you can become just wonderful and great mm -hmm. uh, with whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. Once, and, they, and it's so young, they really don't know yet. Right. And they, you know, they're trying to live off the, off the social media. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's something within them. It's going to come out. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, they don't know yet. But let them tell it, they, they do know. They, yeah. <laughs> they, they know everything. They, they, yeah. No, they, they think they know, but mm -hmm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. It's um, mm -hmm. it's something. Yeah, it How is. could we find out more about Dr. Kim? Oh, yeah, you can go to my website, uh, McNairProductions.com, KimMcNairProductions.com. Uh, you can go find me on there. You can go to my uh, Instagram. Hey. Hey. <laughs> underscore women on the move. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much easy to, easy to reach uh, when it comes to trying to find me. Um, I'm, I'm just here. I'm, you know, my purpose is to serve. That's what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm a loyal servant. And in, in every capacity that I work in and everything that I do is all about serving mm -hmm. my God, our God. And that helps you with mm -hmm. your motivational nuggets. Because yes. this here is almost how you serve. Yes. Yes. Oh, what yes. you're putting stuff down mm -hmm. is another way of serving, uh -huh. helping others. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that you wrote this. My, my yeah. wife looked at it. She said, oh, yeah, this look good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and I like the fact that you say for women to collaborate 
connect and create successful journeys. Yes. That mean we can that means we can do it together. Yes. We can yes. do it together. There's power in the connection. Yes. Yes. And Once if we we, we we're not um we're not competing. Uh-uh. We should, we, we've all got something that we can do, share right. with each right. other and bring, and to, bring the to the table. Yes, and create some great things, listen, girl. Listen, Oh, yes, we can. Wow. I know we talk, we getting the girl talk now. Yeah, yes. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. But, but, but you're right, to... it's coming together. And, you yes. know, I talk about, uh, when I talk about, you know, the power, you know, the and, and, and when I talk about power, I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you have that first power. When that when that power goes out, you go to your backup generator, yes. the Son. Yes, when, when, yes. When, when that made, the gas run out on that, you look, get them jumping cables, the Holy Spirit, and get yes. it started all over yes. again. Okay, so that power and the connection. So I use the plug, the three-prong plug. When I'm talking about that, yes. you got to be plugged in. Yes. It's yes. so very important. It is crucial. And Oh, yeah, oh, it yeah. But, crucial. yes, when we get together, we can do some amazing things. Yes, we Amen. can. Amen. Yes, we can. Well, we want to thank you for joining us, wow. talking to us about yes. motivational yes. nuggets for yes. right. women right. on the move. Yes. Uh, Dr. Kim McNair, thank you so very, very thank much. Thank you. Grateful right for you being here. Amen. And, right. and we're going to take you to the music set now yeah. with Danielle Sonny Bryant singing, I Believe in God. Amen. If you're a believer, can you lift your voice I and sing? We'll make, we'll make your life brand new. You've been waiting. God will we'll restore, restore all, things. all things to you. I believe God. When I call him, he's there. Oh, oh, I believe, I believe God. God. Tap yourself and say, I believe.
Welcome back. And uh, being here in the prayer room, I'm just, is where it all starts at, and I'm glad to be in here. Our prayer partners are here, and they want you to call in. If you need prayer, if any of you are out there, just call the number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828. Our prayer partners are here. I can hear them fervently praying for the people who call in. We want you to call in. No matter what you're going through, they're here to encourage you. They're here to help you go through and make it just a little bit easier with a word of prayer. You know, uh, I remember when I first started here at TV 57, just being here hosting, I was in the prayer room and it just blessed my soul because I was able to give back to some of the people that called in with all the needs, no matter what is going on in your life, they're here. And I remember sometimes when you just don't know what's going on or who you can connect with, you can connect with our prayer partners. Again, the number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828 is the number to call. And I promise you, you will be blessed if your faith would connect with the faith of our prayer partners. And I promise you, and I know for a fact, that God will bless you. Right now, we're gonna take you back to the studio. God bless you. Amen, amen. Make sure you call that number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828, and someone is waiting to pray with you. And I am excited to sit here right now and speak with Danielle Sonny Bryant. She just blessed us with her wonderful music ministry, Gift From God, and welcome her. And, and thank you so much for, for being here thank with you. us. And we want you to talk to us a little bit. I, I, I Just go ahead and, and share with us about your music ministry and then your testimony of healing. Amen. Well, I want to start over. I know this is October. We're honoring the survivors. Yes. And a very intricate part of my ministry, especially with the music part, um, is a tribute to my brother, who is my MD. Uh, he is a 10-year cancer survivor. Wow. And so I bless God because God allowed him to come back from a very serious terminal illness to come back and help produce music and help me in the ministry. Yeah. And so my music is is not just for uplifting and encouragement, it's for healing. Yes. And it's motivational. Mm -hmm. And um, being the PK passes, <laughs> you know how that goes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, faith and everything, all that ties in to what we do as mm -hmm. uh, far as our music ministry goes. Amen, amen. And, 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 and talk to us uh, about um, how long have you been singing? Wow, well, uh, technically, I have to go back to about maybe <laughs> when I was six because my mother, she was a professional singer. And so she started out with her dolls and then when she had me, <laughs> I kind of put the dolls in retirement right. and the teddy bears in retirement and I became the training mm -hmm, staff mm -hmm. in choir. So I would get off the bus from school, do homework, and then she would say, come in the room, there's a Casio sit on the bed, listen, I want you to sing this note. And it's not, mommy, I'm tired, I want to go play notes, sing, sing, these, sing these scales. Mm -hmm. And then it graduated from there to going to school. And I had classical training. My teachers taught me how to sing classical in a foreign language. And so music became a part of my life. And then the praise and worship team, mm -hmm. I joined that in church. And it really blessed me from beginning to where I am now. So I have a lot of thanks to my mom for getting me off the bus and retiring the dolls and the bears. <laughs> and putting you in the and forefront. putting me in the forefront. Amen. Putting you in the forefront. Amen. Wow. I, um, you, you came... All the way from Jersey. Jersey girl, yes, oh, ma'am. Wow. All the way from Jersey to bless us. Brought y'all some of this cool air. Yes, yes. I, I we welcome it. it. I welcome we it. There it. are quite a few that don't yeah. welcome it, but I'm so ready for that good fall weather to, Listen, to come I've in here. Listen, I've experienced the Atlanta yeah. heat, so thank God for yes. the Jersey cool. Yes. Jersey absolutely, cool. absolutely. And so your testimonies, let's talk about that. I... I was not a cancer patient mm -hmm. 
I was at the pre-cancer stage and the doctors found me right before the thyroid cancer could hit. And so when I went in for testing, they found the nodules, they found the lumps. And I thank God for prayer. I did have therapy. You know, we believe in God and we do believe yes, in the but power, but God makes the doctors. Yes. And my mother teaches and my father, they teach. You have to use wisdom. Yes. And so, whereas I was diagnosed as um, one of those people that my vocal cords fold. Mm. And so I was not supposed to be singing at all. And then later on down, you know, I had that therapy and everything's going good. I came home, I was very ill. 22 tumors in my body. And I've been carrying those tumors. It was like carrying the weight of a whole nother human being. And so carrying those issues, singing, preaching, doing everything in ministry, working with my parents in ministry, singing hard, and I was battling terminal illness mm. within myself. And so God brought me out. I was on the table, the operating table. I believe they said it was like only supposed to be a 15 minute procedure, maybe 11 minutes. I was on the table 11 hours. And the doctors cleared their schedule and nobody else had surgery that day. And so with all the, the internal bleeding, all the, the wow. tumors, everything, the damage, the organs fusing together, having to get infusions, having to go to the um, oncologist to have infusions because I was at a very fatal rate with my blood levels mm -hmm. and all these things I did not know. And, you know, I thank God. So when I sing, I believe God. Mm. You believe him. That's the message. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much for anybody that want to snatch that and grab it. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow, 22 yeah. tumors. 22. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, interesting that you talk about your journey, what you went through. We're talking today about people's journeys, how God has given them a journey. There's a journey that we all have to go on and yours is different from the next person, but it's still a journey. Yes. How successful has your faith, well, how has your faith increased on the other side of your journey? Mm -hmm. I've tried every day. Mm -hmm. And when I think I've gotten through one, mm -hmm. I have another one that comes along. Mm -hmm. So God is like, every time you sing, you put a song out, I'm testing you to see if you believe and you're going to live that. So I'm growing. My faith is growing every day. Mm -hmm. And because it's like we sing in the church, I've seen him do it. I've seen him and I know he can work it out for me. Mm -hmm. And so I, God's, whatever God's plan and his will is, I pray that he does just that for me. But I'm thanking him every day for doing the things that I can't see, mm -hmm. the things that I don't know lie on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful. Amen. I really am. Amen. 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 And that's a testimony and, and an inspiration for someone else. Somebody else might say, well, God, I'm not going to put out any other songs because I don't want you to test me. Right. But that's where you walk in your faith. Amen. Because if he tests you, apparently he knows you've got what it takes to come through it. Amen. Yeah, so if uh, uh, singing and, 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 and being in ministry uh, with family. Yes. Yeah. How is that a blessing? Well, everybody in my family, including my brother, are pastors except for me. Okay. <laughs> so you can imagine how that household is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have no choice because it's word coming from every direction. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But um, it's also helpful because mm -hmm. I have that access, you know, uh, and there are times that I can wake my mom up in the middle of the night. Hey, mom, listen, I, I need to talk to you about this gift. Mm -hmm. Explain this to me. Mm hmm help me how do i minister it into somebody and it's good to have somebody pour it into you mm -hmm. because that's how i pour it into someone else right. it's not for me and this is not my gift mm -hmm. this is what god has given me to share with, with other people so it is a blessing mm -hmm. but i enjoy i enjoy the ministry i enjoy <laughs> the people meeting new people i love the youth and so it's amen a for me amen yeah. Amen. And the youth need to know yes. that someone loves them yes. and that someone 
has their best interest at heart because it's so easy when the adults get caught up in what's going on yes. that they can forget. They can forget about them, but we want them to know, especially in the day and age that they're living in now with what they're facing and, and the bullying and all of that sort of thing, we need to encourage them and we need to lift them up and we need to. Now, tell us how we can find you Very on social media. On social media. Okay, okay. So you can find me at Danielle Sunny Bryant on, I will say Facebook. Daniel Sonny Bryant, and then on Twitter, Instagram, Daniel Sonny B. Daniel so Sonny B. In 2020, we're going to be coming out with uh, our YouTube page, Sonny Bryant Music. And so that is going to be a journey in itself as it ministry, again, geared for the young people, but it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's coming up. But Daniel Sonny B and Daniel Sonny Bryant. Okay, Danielle Sunny Bryant on Facebook and Danielle Sunny B everywhere. on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere else. else. So you can find her and you can be inspired and you can be encouraged Amen. just like she's doing with us tonight. Amen. We are grateful for you coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget right here we are educational. We are inspirational. And we are community. God, God bless, bless you. you. Glad that you're joining us, and I'm here with the two of the members of the Pink Nation uh, Choir, the director, uh, my friend and brother, Vincent Ross, and uh, one of the choir members. Talk to us a little bit quickly how we can find out more about the Pink Nation Survivors Choir. Hi, I'm Marion Perkins, Thank and you. I'm a seven-year breast cancer thriving survivor. Amen. Amen. And you can find us on Facebook at the Pink Nation BCS Choir. Okay. And also on Instagram at the Pink Nation mm -hmm. Survivors. Breast Cancer and you have Survivors. A, and Squad. the website. The website www.thepinknation.com. The Pink but Nation. I have to correct you because the ladies are getting on me. It's the Pink Nation Breast Cancer Survivors Choir. Okay. Breast Cancer Survivors Choir. It's the Pink Art. Nation yeah, by, Breast by Cancer <laughs> Survivors <laughs> Choir. Choir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> we find out more about them. Uh, the website's there, pinknationsurvivorschoir.com. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to take you to the music ministry of Sonny Bryant, singing Life on Purpose. Live on, Live on Purpose. Purpose, excuse me. I feel like you put your hands 
together like this. Hey! Oh, I'm gonna make it. 
on purpose. On purpose. That means be intentional yeah. about everything you do every day. Get up being intentional about whatever it is. Amen. Make it happen. Move. Don't sit still. Get up from sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> God can't use you sitting down. I remember Get up. that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Our, our next guest is a, a young man by the way of Alabama. Alabama. From Don't New York. say roll time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> is back. Um, he is currently uh, the senior pastor of the Love Fellowship Tabernacle in Atlanta, where his pastor is uh, none other than Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Hezekiah Walker. And uh, music ministry and uh, Grammy Award winner mm -hmm. and Stellar Award winner. So, but they're here to talk about uh, the new journey is Pastor Ed Thomas. Welcome him to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Pastor Thomas, thank you for joining us this evening. And, thank you for allowing me to be um, here. Glad to see you. Thank new you church. Know. New church. In, in a ATL. big city. In a huge city. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of traffic. With a lot of traffic and a lot of churches. My Lord. <laughs> All over the place. Yeah. Talk to us about the journey of starting a new church. The journey has been very interesting to say the least. Um, it's not my first time pastoring, mm -hmm. but it's the first time that we've actually planted a church from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, that transition is kind of difficult. It's, it takes a lot of patience, mm -hmm. um, a lot of diligence. And um, so, but I think that God has equipped us, you know, and I, I originally I said, God, you know, why Atlanta there? Again, as you said a few minutes ago, there are so many churches, you know, mm -hmm. you can look on every corner, every street, there are churches all mm -hmm. up and down the road. Um, the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said something to me, which is very profound to me, which was there are a group of people for every ministry. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we look at, okay, well, that ministry should shut down. They only have a few people. That ministry should shut down because they have a few people. But the reality is every few people that is in that ministry is called to that ministry, mm -hmm. to that man or the woman of God. Amen. And they won't be able to receive it from somewhere else. Yeah. So to close down a ministry would mean someone else has been lost. So I learned to appreciate every ministry and that's why I am in the city of Atlanta because wow. I believe God has called me here. I know I'm not everybody's pastor, mm -hmm. but I am somebody's pastor. Somebody's Amen. pastor. Amen. That's good, that's good. Amen, not everybody's pastor, but somebody's <laughs> pastor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you said a mouthful about why you only have five members, why you still up? because that's their pastor. That's their pastor. Yeah. Wow, that's good. It's interesting you said about receiving. Mm -hmm. And even if you have 20 members, 20,000, mm -hmm. 20 members may not receive from the 20,000 vision. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, some people really don't look at it like that. I think that was profound and people yeah. have to understand, well, I'm happy in the small church mm -hmm. because that's where I'm getting fed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Um, besides the challenges, where do you see the church going? Well, um, our church is different, and I, and I say, and you know, every pastor believes that um, our approach to God is so um, mind-blowing, I believe, and people come and visit the service. Um, we have an open mind. My father taught me a long time ago. I started preaching when I was young, very young. My father taught me a long time ago. He said, son, when you approach the scriptures, when you're studying the scriptures, reading the scriptures, read it with everything that you've ever thought about it before erased out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Approach it from a different way. And a lot of times we feel like we have God all figured out mm -hmm. and we have him in this box. And we think that we have all of the truth. But when God is in saying, there is more to me mm -hmm. than what you know. Uh, we, we even see that in the scriptures where he goes to raise Lazarus um, and the sisters run out and said, Master, if you had been here before, if you had he wouldn't have died mm -hmm. because they only knew God as the healer but not the resurrector. Mm -hmm. right? Jesus says unto them, you only, that's the only thing you know about me. Let me introduce you to another side of me mm -hmm. that you have not yet met. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe that we as the body of Christ and the church is going, we want to show people that there's another side of God that maybe we haven't tapped into yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, now you coming out, coming at us from a few angles here. I, <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate that. How, how has the move impacted you? Ooh, so 
Um, from, you know, I grew up in a small town, mm -hmm. small town called Raglan, Alabama. Um, when I say small, I mean my graduating class had 32 people in it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so from there to college and then moving from Alabama to New York City wow. um, was a major difference. I bet. You know, then from New York City to Miami, then back to Alabama and, and now here. The journey has been rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, trying, you know, when you're on the journey, sometimes you get tired, you get frustrated, you want to mm -hmm. give up. You just, mm -hmm. Lord, let me take a break. You know, let me pause for a moment <laughs> and let me just chill out and not do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but when there's a call on your life to do more and to be more and um, your assignment has to be fulfilled, you can't mm -hmm. stop. You have mm -hmm. to keep going. And so um, the journey has been tedious and trying, but also very rewarding um, to see people's lives change and to see people come to Christ and see people gain knowledge of who God is and his love for them is the most rewarding thing I could ever imagine. Mm. So let's talk about the journey and your wife. Yes. And how has it been, how has ministry been for you and her moving and traveling, now planting a church? <laughs> because it takes a lot to have ministry at home the right way so that you can plant the church the right way. Right. So how's that been? Well, I'm, I'm a very real preacher and, and, I, and I'm very transparent. And the reality is that sometimes it can be difficult because having to find the balance or, you know, and I was struggling with, okay, God, how do I balance ministry? How do I balance work? How do I balance the, my home? How would I be a good father? How do I be a good husband? And the reality is there is no real balance. You just have to be who you are in that moment to who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been difficult, um, but again, as I said, again, I hate to sound like a repeat, but rewarding. Um, it has taught us how to grow closer to each other, um, pray together, really um, have one another's back. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is at the end of the day, people can walk away and leave you. You know, mm -hmm. you can start a ministry and have 20,000 people and tomorrow have 10,000 and the next day have five and the next, next Sunday have two. Mm -hmm. But reality is your wife, my wife, has been there from the beginning. And um, having to find that perfect uh, chemistry between my ministry and her ministry, because she has a ministry as well, not just to support me, but for me to, to support her. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, been a, it's been a journey. And um, I think that we're kind of getting in the rhythm now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a year mm -hmm. and a half. We're kind of getting in the rhythm and things are going really good. That's so good. I appreciate her. I couldn't do it without her. But that's the balance. That's the, that's the balance. That's the balance, being able to give and take. Yes. Being able to know yeah. when she needs you to uplift her. Right. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Right. So. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, um, my wife and I have been doing a lot of stuff together forever, it seems like. And the, the, the struggle is real. Mm -hmm. But we know that we're called for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. When, when, you, when things get tough, you have to remind yourself of why and what. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing this because God has called us to it. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it may not feel good. But if God right. called us to it, we have to see it through. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Have to see it through. Um, so here in this fantastic city of Atlanta uh -huh. and, and, and planting a new church and, and the people are coming, what is it that you know God specifically wants for these people here? Huh. <laughs> my, my prayer is that everyone that comes through the doors, mm -hmm. be, their life be changed. Mm -hmm. See, I think we do a good job in the church of making people feel good mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feel like they can accomplish anything, mm -hmm. but actually not accomplishing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we're giants in the spirit, but nobody in the flesh. That's like seeing on the wall, building fun and what was raised but nothing ever being built. But nothing ever being built. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the middle of a series now entitled Go For It. You gotta go after it because mm -hmm. I believe that not only as God has called us and set us apart and called us to be holy and saved, but he's called us to be the leader 
in the marketplace. Deuteronomy says, you shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Mm -hmm. You should be the head and not the tail. We love to quote it, but we can't live it. Mm -hmm. And I think in this season, God is causing us not to just quote it, but actually be a living testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where our faith comes in at. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To put us, you know, you call me to do this. And sometimes we could talk a lot, but I, and you could quote me from, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think procrastination has a lot to do with a lot of things that we're doing. Of course, in the it's church. the thief of time. You yes. Know? Mm -hmm. and, and we want to do it, but it's like, oh, we, I'll do it tomorrow. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, with the couple of minutes that we have left, what's your heart's desire for your ministry? It's just to be a blessing to whoever comes through the door, mm -hmm. um, whoever we go out and, and contact in the mm -hmm. streets, whoever we meet, it's to really show the love of God. I, I say this all the time at the church, we can't be Love Fellowship Tabernacle if there is no, no real no. love. Mm -hmm. um, but love and kindness, the scripture says, Jesus says, have I drawn thee? And the reality is church people can be so unloving and preaching about a loving wow. God. I want you to say that one more time. <laughs> We say that one more time. Church, <laughs> church people. people can be so unloving mm -hmm. while we're preaching about a loving God. Mm -hmm. It is so mm -hmm. contradictory. Yes. And and we have to understand that the by you know when we understand the scripture about um, love and we say I love you, I love you, I love mm -hmm. you. But if we never show that to you, mm -hmm. then it's not real love. Right. Yeah. Right. That that's good. That's good. The restaurants ought to be excited to see us come on Sunday. Absolutely. Not say, here they come. Absolutely. They, and they won't tip. <laughs> they come in and they fuss and they mean and they want everything changed and they won't even tip us. They won't even tip. We need to be an example. example. Absolutely. We the really example. need to be the, the example, example. And, 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 and give. And, 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 and that right there, that's it. They'll know that you, we are his disciples indeed by his love, Absolutely. by our love. By our love. How do we love them? Yeah. One to another. Mm. Because mm -hmm. if I if I say I love you, but I never extend it to yes. you, then you never are a recipient of what I have for you. Right. Mm. Then it becomes a lie. Then it becomes a lie. Then we go into another. Then we go into a whole another sin because now we liars <laughs> yes. and we will have our portion. In the lake. And we don't want right. the lake. And we don't want to go to the lake. Right. My God, listen. Love Fellowship right here in Atlanta. Yes. And tell us where we can find the, the, the church. That let so us we are located um, 8661 on Covington Highway mm -hmm. in Lithonia, Georgia, slash Cunyers, Georgia. It's right mm -hmm. on the borderline. Um, we're there every Sunday at 430. Uh, we have an afternoon service every Sunday. No morning service, just 430. Um, you can follow me on social media, Ed L. Thomas, uh, via Facebook or Instagram, Twitter. Um, we would love to have you just come by and just be a blessing Amen. to us. Amen. 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 Thank you thank for you joining us and thank you for yeah. sharing with us. Thank you for Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. Going back to the music ministry, Danielle Sonny Bryant, tell God what you need. Amen. I think I want to have a little church. Can you put your hands together with me?
what, what you, you need. What you need. <laughs> and I believe he'll hear you when you tell him. Amen. My, my, Amen. my. They took us right on out to camp meeting. Yes, Lord. Yes, they did up <laughs> under the tent. Yes, and yes. And yes, everybody was feeling the presence of, the of God. Amen. Just tell him what you need. Ooh. Isn't that something? I love God, Amen. and he loves us. Amen. That's why we can tell him what we need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You all have been calling in tonight, and, and that is what we want you to do. That number on the bottom of your screen, 770-300-9828, or the toll-free number, 800-810-5950. You call in, share your prayer request. We are going to join our faith with your faith. We are going to touch and agree tonight. There are some that have said they have back pain. They're looking for jobs. They have sickness in their body. They're praying for strength. They are praying um, also for peace Amen. and for courage and for wisdom. There is so much that is going on and that has us at a point where we have to rely on God. We have to, it's, it's no, no way around it. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can, uh, God has given us each other right. to be able to meet some of the needs we have. But if it were not for God, those people would still not be available to you. So tonight we want you to, we want to encourage you to trust God. Those of you that have called in and we have these prayer requests. So know that your calling is not in vain. And, and, and we are all going to just touch and agree. We are going to trust God and we are going to pray for your victory. We are going mm -hmm. to pray for your healing. We're going to pray for your breakthrough. And if you do not know him as your personal savior, Amen. we are going to pray for that. I promise God will give you the strength to go through whatever it is that you're going through. Amen. And we're going to pray at this time. Yeah. Father God, we thank you so very much. As the three of us sit here, we acknowledge God, we honor God, and we believe God to be a healer. We believe God to be a deliverer. We believe God to be a God of strength, a God of courage, a God of wisdom. We believe God to be a provider and a way maker, no matter what it is. We've heard the testimony tonight, how he can heal cancer. It's, it, you have to put your uh, works together with your faith and trust God to make it all better. Believe him. God, we're praying right now that everyone that is tuning in, that is watching, will understand their purpose and what you have put them on this earth to do and that they will not leave this life without having accomplished those things. We thank you, Lord God, for every guest that was here tonight, that you strengthen them and that you give them wisdom and courage to continue to move forward and what you have called them to do. Our community of believers, our community of worshipers, our neighborhood, God, we pray for them right now to walk in victory victory yes. and understanding in Jesus name. Amen. 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 We thank God Amen. for each of you and we want you to remember that we are inspirational. Yes, we are. We are educational and we are community. And we are community. God, God bless, bless you. you. And thank and you, thank for, you joining for joining us. us. Look at this.